Hi there. It's me again, Michael Ricuti, Ricuti Confections. Um, we missed you last week, um, and now we're back. Uh, so what I decided to do, since the strawberries are kicking hard right now, especially in California, I'm sure everywhere else, is, and there's so many different types of strawberries, um, that I uh, decided to make something really one of my favorites. Um, when I actually was a pastry chef at, at different places, and even when we had the lab cafe, um, I would um, I made the strawberry shortcake. So, so the strawberry shortcake is um, is something that you can improvise with. You don't have to use strawberries because there's so many different types of fruits around right now. You can use blackberries. You can use peaches. Um, apricots, if they're still around, apricots probably aren't my favorite because it's a little difficult to kind of get the right apricot, but there's so many wonderful peaches. Um, any of the soft fruits is really nice. Plums. So, uh, and then you can play around with, you know, making some sort of maceration with, like, say, Santa Rosa plums and sugar or brown sugar and, uh, you know, vanilla. Um, you can use different types of herbs. Um, you can play around with using tarragon. Uh, it's really, I'm going to show you the base, but I also want you to remember that you can do a lot of things in addition to the base. Uh, so that's what's really important. So as I go along, I'm going to show, I'm going to uh, include or exclude some things from the recipe just to show you that there's other things that are available if you don't have them. Uh, especially since a lot of us are shelter in place, it just makes it a lot easier for us to produce it. So let's make the biscuits first. That would be the first thing. Um, so here you need some sort of bowl. The recipe that I calculated for um, that's online is for 10 biscuits and they're only two ounce biscuits so they're small. So you can do five larger biscuits or you can just you can double, triple, quadruple, whatever the recipe. Um, you can make it larger. It scales up and the other thing to think about is is that you can also use if you wanted to, this to be gluten-free uh, cup for cup works really well, or if you have a gluten-free flour mix, it might work really well, but I haven't tested it, but I've definitely tested cup for cup, and I know that's very available. Um, Do you remember if we included the shortcake uh, in the recipe, in the book, in Chocolate Obsession? The book's no, right behind it's you. Not, it's not in the, it's not in Chocolate Obsession. But it is on our website it as a recipe. It is on our website, yeah. So it's just well, also we should add that it was a dessert that we served at the lab when we had right. a cafe. Right. Yeah, I said that. Oh, but sorry. Wasn't paying attention. You have to, you have to, you have I'm waving at people present. on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to it. So, so the first thing is, uh, and I like to chill everything down, like uh, because you'll just get a little bit better results, especially when you're working with butter. So I'm using but, uh, all-purpose flour. This is a, a Justo's organic all-purpose stone milk flour. This is 250 grams or two cups of flour. So can they get that online, or um, it's accessible, right? You can get that online. Another great flour to work with is King Arthur's, and and that's very available. It's readily available online. Um, so you would do the same calculation if you did cup for cup. So you would do two cups of regular all-purpose flour, or you would do two cups of uh, cup for cup. I know that sounds a little confusing, two cups of cup per cup. So that's not four cups, that's two cups of cup per cup. <laughs> okay. oh, so, now, now you've confused everyone. Yeah, I'm confusing myself. That's what Follow the, the recipe. Right. Um, so here we have uh, salt. Half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking soda, two teaspoons of baking powder, and one tablespoon of sugar. Um, questions people ask is, can I use a different type of sugar? Can I use turbinado sugar? Um, yeah, sure, you can. It's, and you can use brown sugar. Um, so you can mess around with the sugars. Uh, I've never tried the non-sucrose type sugars, but I'm not saying you can't use them. It's like an alternative sweetener, but it's possible. So here is um, all of the ingredients, the dries. So I have my flour here, and I have all my dries here. What I want to do is really quickly, I'm going to step off camera. I just want to make sure that there's no lumps going into this, so I'm going to sift all of the dries, because this is the baking powder, baking soda, salt, and sugar. So you can see there's some 
little bits there. I don't want to, I don't want to have like, you don't want to bite into a biscuit and have like a, a nice little baking powder rush. Um, so I make sure I get rid of that. But you know, you're, you're going to have all these residual um, pieces of sugar or salt. I would just dump that in because you, you want that. Okay. So the recipe calls for baking powder and soda. Yes. Um, to be in the freezer for this recipe, which is fine, but should we always store the baking powder and soda no. in the freezer? No, you don't need to. It's just, so it's specific to this recipe. Yeah. So what I what I what I suggest is, and this is like really cool. You know how like you buy like Bisquick. So just think of this as like a Bisquick. You've just made your Bisquick mix, and you could either like have your sugar, have your butter, in addition to it. Um, uh, within the mix, but then you'd have to keep it all in the freezer. But here um, is the butter. Let me just see what the recipe says because I can't remember what, what I wrote here. Yeah, this is 4.5 ounces of butter. So, so here is the butter that I kept in the freezer. And I just cut it into cubes. So now it's like really hard. And you would add it to this mixture here. And then you would you would kind of work it in. Um, if it's soft, you want to freeze it and you want to get it you want to get it hard um, because it's, I just like the fact that you when you chop it up. I usually use some sort of um, like a, a like a Robocoupe, a Cuisinart, um, uh, immersion blender is what we're gonna use. Uh, this is a little Breville and it's got like a little kind of Cuisinart hookup to it. So this is the setup here. But what I've already prepared is, um, so this is the little setup for the, for the immersion blender. And you, know, you, you would know, typically want you, to chill that I chill that everything, bowl. yeah. I mean, I just chill it right before I'm ready to use it. But this, this is the frozen, this is the, everything frozen. So this is your flour, your baking powder, your baking soda, your salt, and your sugar. It's all in there. So now you have your like little kit. So you could like prep this. You could prep this and um, and the thing that's really cool about this is that you could prep it and then uh, you'll have it ready to go. It's like, oh, I want to make biscuits. Um, I've got some everything in the freezer. The only thing you need is uh, the recipe calls for buttermilk, but I'm going to talk about alternatives to buttermilk. But let's chop this up first. So here. And so I said, you can, you, can, you can do this by hand if you want, if you want to have the butter softer. You want to get it to like a cornmeal consistency. So, whoops. Whoa. And that's what could happen if yeah. you don't have the top on securely. No, no, it just, it, it's just jamming up. Don't try that at home. Let's see if I can get this. Okay, watch there. your fingers. We need those. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, so now that I had this, made this mess... This is my, this is what I'm thinking. I'm gonna like clear my area. Just bear with me for one minute here. Yeah, and just so you guys know, he's not this clumsy in the professional kitchen. For some reason, that happens at home quite a bit. Yeah, so now I need to just clear my area <laughs> off because I had a blowout. Well, probably because we've got all the janky materials here, yeah. right? Our equipment at work is far more superior than what we have at home. Like if you have a Cuisinart, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so you know that William and Ruby are watching. Okay, guys, just be careful. Don't copy Mi Michael all yeah, the way don't, through. <laughs> don't do this at home. So let's try this again. All right. So here's the little blade for this particular device. I'm just gonna that's wipe, that's fine. I'm gonna wipe off the <laughs> flour. This, this so you've got this the butter. Right. You've got all of the the dry ingredients in there that you pulled out of the freezer. Right. I mean, this machine just might not. This particular mixer just might not be strong enough. Mm. You know, that might be what it is. I'm gonna just hold this down on tight. You can hear it's kind of struggling. So maybe what I'll do is turn it on speed. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to turn it up to 11 at first. Right. Well. 
but it's really breaking up that the butter, the frozen butter. So I'm gonna now lift the lid, take a look. It's looking beautiful. Now we're cooking. Just for a second, I'm going to. It's like I've got flour all over the floor now. And That's okay. It's beautiful. Because I'm going to have to go and work at the lab. You can, can go at it. it and clean it. Yeah, it looks, like, <laughs> it looks like someone's cleaning up afterwards. Um, all right. Okay. So you could work the butter into the flour mixture softer and get it really fine and then just chop it up or you can work it in with your hands and chop it up and, and work it with a fork. But if it's too, too soft, it's sometimes it's really difficult. Some people like like really big chunks of butter. Right. Um, well, we should also add it is unseasonably warm today. Yeah, we actually have the AC on right now. Yeah, we had to chill down the kitchen because it's... Because I was stressing out. <laughs> Worry that everything was gonna melt. Well, yeah, so the upside is you're not doing chocolate. Right. I'm just gonna cut this up more. We already have some pre-made biscuits, so um, if all the first comes to work, we can just show you what the biscuits are like that they're gonna make. I'm just making sure that all the little bits are chopped up. So I'm going, I'm, I'm actually taking some out. So it's actually good to see like when you when you have a problem. Like so, I just had a problem, and now I'm trying to, you know, make it work. Because it's always going to happen in any kitchen, and it's just the way it goes. And I'm all about like, okay, if something happens, how do I, how do I get out of it? How do I make it work? How do I make it better? So it's really important. Okay, I think we're good. We're gonna take this off the set. So what's the consistency on that now? So I'm gonna show you the consistency. It should be like cornmeal. Oh, I'm getting a little bit of the glare there. Okay. See, it's like a fine, it's like a coarse cornmeal. Okay, so we have a comment here that sounds, okay, here. So, wouldn't it be easier to just take the dry ingredients and mix it in the butter from the fridge and not frozen in the cuisine? Yeah. yeah I so think, what I, was your, what's your philosophy that you chose to I do it this that, way? I think that probably what I'm thinking is, is that usually I'm making very large batches of this. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't put it afterwards like um, the suggestion. Yeah. So okay. when you're making a smaller batch, I think it's a good idea. You can definitely just have the butter in the fridge, so you're, it's not the machine or you are not working as hard. Right. To get the butter to incorporate and get down to size. But for a home baker, for a smaller scale that you're making of the sh strawberry shortcake, you would, you could potentially do it after, right? And it would still be okay. Yes. Yeah. You could even get the butter and everything prepped. You can have this prepped. You could like prep this and now put it in a bag or put it in a container and freeze it and then um, use it for a later date. All you need to do is add your uh, buttermilk. And what I was going to say is, is that if you don't have buttermilk, you can actually use cream, heavy cream. You can use creme fraiche. It's going to make it much richer. Mm -hmm. And you can use yogurt. Um, there are different levels of fat. But they seem to work really well. They're just gonna, you're gonna have a more rich, uh, intense biscuit, but there's nothing wrong with that. So here I have buttermilk. So I'm adding the buttermilk, which is 5.5 ounces, directly to this, this mixture here. So like I said, you can, you can use anything. I'm gonna. Get more of you there. And I, um, you just want to mix it lightly. And now what you can do is if you want, you could take a lemon, you could put some zest in there. So you can Michael, do lime, you can do orange. If, um, if you're using cream or crumb fresh instead of buttermilk, would it still be 5.5 ounces? I would keep it the same ratio. 
Yeah, I said it'll just be it'll be more it'll be richer. Um, but it works just fine. I've I've used all sorts of things. I mean, some people do. Some people will take like say for example, if it's five point five ounces of heavy cream, you could do five ounces of heavy cream and 0.5 ounces of water. You know, because you can lighten it up. So that's another another thing you do. If you like, for, you don't have the buttermilk. If you use creme fraiche or if you use yogurt, you're gonna get that tang like you would from buttermilk. So I would say you can use a non-fat yo uh, yogurt as well, mm -hmm. um, European style yogurt. So the European style yogurts are usually. And you still do 5.5 of that? Yeah, it's, but they're they're almost like buttermilk. They're really they're really runny. You don't want like the Greek style yogurt, the really thick stuff. Right. I don't, that doesn't work too well. And you just want to mix this carefully. And then what we're going to do is... Um, so our friends at the Palmwood asked if you don't have buttermilk, typically they mix a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in half and half or cream. Is vinegar a problem with this recipe? Would, is it going to affect the... It shouldn't be, you know, you always have to be concerned with acids. Um, but I think with this particular recipe, you'll be fine. Um, sometimes you, um, you know, sometimes acids will turn off, will turn cream or, or, or milk. But if you're using something that's already acidulated, like a cultured piece, then it works. Like, for example, like if it's creme fraiche or buttermilk. Mm-hmm. I think that should work. That sounds really nice, actually. Well, and you did just put some um, zest in it, too, so... Yeah, but I'm just using the zest, so you don't want to use lemon juice. Like, I wouldn't add lemon juice to this. I wouldn't add liquid lemon juice. I would just add zest. And so this is the important part, is not to knead it. So you're combining, yeah. but not kneading it. I'm doing it. it on this cutting board. I would normally do it on the table, because I'm trying, I wanted to use the table for this other procedure. So I'm trying not to get it too messy, but I might have to use a table because it's just it's the, not enough room for me to work here. And I usually wear gloves when I do it, um, just because it's easier to clean up. Do you think um, yo low fat yogurt would also work? It works great. Yeah. <clears throat> so as long as it still has that thick liquidy consistency well you think about buttermilk it's usually it's low fat or no fat you know most a lot most of the buttermilks aren't really high in fat so it's really just a, a culture that you know that has that really mm -hmm. nice tang to but whole fat or low fat either one would work mm -hmm. and then here once you get it to We miss palm wood. I know. Uh, we do. Uh, it's been a while. Too well. long. So I'm basically just getting this nice, rough, kind of shaggy mass of dough. And then what you can do is you can actually roll it, you can treat it like puff pastry. You could roll it and fold it and kind of create layers. Mm -hmm. But I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I just figured I'd tell you. <laughs> and I don't even use a rolling pin. I just kind of get it to a desired shape. You could use a rolling pin if you want to get like these really perfect. And I try not to use any extra flour. Just work with what you have. And then you want to make sure you have your oven preheated to 350 degrees. So I always preheat it to 375, and then what I do is I turn it down to um, 350 when I put, place the, the biscuits or anything in there baking, because you're gonna lose that 25, you're gonna lose that percentage of the degree anyway. So if you have it at 350 and you put something in there, you're gonna, it's gonna go down to 325. So if you have it at 375, it'll go down to hopefully 350, so you don't really lose a lot of temperature. I'm just making a little, uh, round parchment taking a square and folding it in half like a rectangle folding it in half and kind of folding it like so so I'm taking it from this point folding it over folding it over folding it over here 
And then my pan, we use the big pan. These are these really great um, pans from France, these black steel pans, I love them. And, uh, so, so will the black steel bake differently from say, a regular pan? They're just, they're just they don't, they don't bake in the oven. Mm -hmm. They hold on to the heat. Um, they heat up slowly and they, stay, they maintain the heat and you get a really nice bottom, heated bottom. You get a nice finished bottom versus aluminum. Sometimes you don't get as much of a finished bottom. So here I'm just kind of sizing this piece for this. This is just me kind of playing around. You can also use this technique to cover a pot if you're boiling something like cream or something. Or, oh, so it doesn't splatter? Yeah. You just take this so now you've got a round. And in the recipe, it says five, it says uh, 10 two ounce biscuits. So you can either eyeball it or you can scale them. Um, what I would do is you can, you, can, you can make it out to the size that you need. I think it's like five by eight inches and that'll determine the thickness. And if you do that, you should get, you should get 10 pieces. So um, can you use the bottom of a, a springboard pan, would that work as well? Yeah, that'd be fine. I mean, you can bake on anything. You can bake on a, you know, a foil, whatever you have, you're just, it's just that if you have a really nice baking sheet, you know, it's so much better. You know, that you, whatever you, whatever you, if you have your favorite baking sheet, just use it. This is my favorite baking sheet. <laughs> well, also we have a very small oven, yeah. so. It helps. And I kind of cut this too big. I sized it too big. So I'm just going to cut it down. I want to make sure it fits in Oops. our very small oven, our Betty Crocker oven. We do most of our cooking outside uh, and then whatever baking, we bake in the oven, but um, we do a lot of it just, a lot of as, a lot, as much outside as we possibly can. And so now what I'm doing is, is that I'm just going to brush a little cream on top. You could brush a little buttermilk, cream, whatever. You can sprinkle it with like a really coarse sugar. Um, you can put, you know, uh, herbs on there. Um, or not herbs, like the spices on there if you like. Like you can do like a cinnamon sugar mix, whatever you want. I mean, it's really open. Um, I would just put something on there that's not going to burn. I said herbs at first, but I didn't mean herbs because herbs would burn. And that's it. You can put a little, um, you can put a little sugar on top. I mean, I try not to make them too sweet. Just because the, yeah. the shortcake is going to be with the, mm -hmm. the mousseline and whipped cream. Right. So that's it. Simple. Let's go in the oven. So now I'm going to turn the temperature down. So you've got it. So you had it at 375 to preheat, and now it's at 350. How long are you gonna bake it? Probably like 15, 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to bake, we're gonna make um, pastry cream. So there's two little fillings that I do for this. There's one, it's just a whipped cream. And the other one is like a pastry cream, uh, we call it like a mousseline which is just like a pastry cream that I make and then I add a little bit of butter to it and whip it and you get like this nice kind of custardy texture. Yeah, and so if anybody had noticed in the photograph that we posted, the what we do is we typically layer it with the mousseline, with the pastry cream, we top it with the um, macerated strawberries and then we finish it off with the whipped cream before we make it into the sandwich. Is it a sandwich? So it's like well, a strawberry. I mean, Strawberry sandwich? Kind of. Strawberry sandwich. Although you can actually eat it that way, but it's always fun to try. All right, so here we go. Um, um, we're going to oh, make pastry so, cream. Oh, so, well, it's whipped, it's whipped cream. There was a, um, a question if there's no cream. So it's not cream like a sauce. It's a whipped cream that we top it with. So milk would not work, right? There's two things. There's the there's the pastry cream, the mousseline, which is pastry cream with a little bit of butter added to it. And then in addition to that, there's a whipped cream. Um, you can use just straight whipped cream. You don't have to, use, you know, you can bypass this. You can use yogurt. You can use, you know, um, 
Oh, yeah. Which we might bust out because I don't feel like walking. Yeah. Or there's always. <laughs> no, we're talking. This is the way to go. This is actually like a, a good one. Oh, like okay. A, a, this is clover milk from Sonoma makes a, uh, you know, a ready whip type uh, whipped cream. Um, I'm sure it's got the appropriate amount of nitrous oxide to make it sure that it, it whips properly. Oh, um, I misunderstood the question. So we're not brushing the biscuit with milk before popping it in the oven, right? No, but you can brush it with milk. So depending on what you brush it with will determine the color. Um, if you brush it with milk, you're gonna you're not gonna get as much of a like a a, a really nice burn rust color. Uh, if you if you brush it with heavy cream, you'll get a much darker color, a deeper tone, uh, because the fat in the cream starts to burn. Not burn, but it you know it's almost like the Maillard. It it just kind of changes and caramelizes. So that's. Um, you know, that's a preference. Or you don't have to put anything on top of it. You can just bake it. So you've had a big revolt where you have no takers for the canned whipped cream. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that's like when I make Philly cheesesteak. I, I like it with cheese Whiz and everybody's like, Yeah, that's, like that's wrong cheese. too. But that's just how it goes, you know? <laughs> okay, so now we're going to like make our pastry cream. So this is whole milk. Um, and this is uh, one and a half cups of whole milk. Um, let me make sure my little burner's going. There we go. And then we're doing about four tablespoons of sugar. Spoon here, mix it up. And then we have vanilla bean. So I already removed the seeds from some of the vanilla beans, but this is a vanilla bean, which I usually cut on the side. I scrape the bean out, which is this here. It's got a little flour in it from when I had my uh, accident. <laughs> Blow out. So maybe that'll add something to this pastry cream that I'm not. Uh, it's going to thicken it more, won't it? Well, I don't think it's enough to really do anything, but. I like a lot of vanilla, but you don't even have to use vanilla. You can, you can use other things. You can also use zest. You just have to be careful. Sometimes, depending on the milk, depending on how fresh the milk is, it could, it could turn. You know, you could lose it because of the acid from the zest. Um, but most of the time, it works just fine. And here, I have yolks. So this is about four plus yolks, which is about a third of a cup. So this is a recipe that was shown to me from a really dear friend of mine in Philadelphia, Raymond Zmidersky, and um, he, um, it's, a, it's a pastry cream that you, you can actually make it and not, um, you don't have to cook it out as much. It's a lot different than your typical pastry creams where you cook it out a lot or you use flour. This one, I use cornstarch. So I have my yolk mixture ready but I have to be careful. You can't add the yolks, uh, anything to the yolks like sugar straight away until your until your your milk is ready, um, because if you add the sugar and let the sugar sit in the yolks, it's going to start to burn the yolks, and you'll get all these like it'll start looking like tapioca. So you don't want to do that. So when you say until the milk's ready, what until do you what are you looking for? Until it's ready to boil, like a scald. And you know this is my old school copper pan. It, 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 it heats up really quickly. It's like almost there. So what I'm going to do is take this two tablespoons of, of sugar. And there's also about, there's also a pinch of salt in there. I always use salt for not for flavor as much as just for kind of, it's more of a chemical. So Michael, reaction. you put the milk and only the vanilla bean, right? So the, in the pot is milk, vanilla bean, and sugar. And then there's another percentage of sugar that's added to the yolks here. And then we also have a quarter cup of cornstarch here. So I'm adding the cornstarch. And now you're gonna just make a, make a paste. 
So you want to kind of keep this moving. So you make like a nice paste. And if you keep it moving and you have the sugar in there and the cornstarch, it should, it should be fine. So this is coming to a boil. It's like an ice skating rink back here. There's flour on the floor and it's really slippery. So if I fall down, you'll know why. If all of a sudden you're like, <laughs> <laughs> please, <laughs> please don't do that. I just disappear. Okay, so we're getting ready to boil here. I said scald, I think I might, let me just double check the recipe. I think I might have either said scald or boil. Uh, you're smoking a bit there. That's good. And then what we're going to do after this, um, we've got the biscuits baking. I'm going to turn them. So now like halfway through the baking, turn them in the oven. You got your cream or your milk going with your sugar and your vanilla. It's, it's coming to a boil. Now this is um, the weird part. You question can... regarding allergies. Can tapioca starch be replaced? Yes. You okay. Can use tapioca starch. Okay. So. so I'm going to just pour this all in. I say temper it, but you can actually just pour it in hot. I know that sounds really weird. Did you scald it? Or, or did you can temper is it a the full... eggs, but with the amount of starch and sugar in here, this is how we used to do it. No, no, no. The milk, was the milk it? Is, the milk was just getting ready to boil. Just so, about boiled. So, yeah. yeah. Does non-dairy milk work as well as whole milk? Uh, I would imagine. You haven't I mean, tried you might it. Might as well just use water then. Oh, Michael. <laughs> well, I mean, because it, you know, it doesn't have a lot of. So you're flavor. saying that if you. Non dairy would probably change the flavor then. I have and texture. people that, would, that don't, you know, try to steer away from dairy, just use, just use uh, water. And sometimes they infuse the water with different types of herbs or teas. I'm not saying that sarcastically, I'm just saying. Well, what about other kinds, like how about a rice milk or you a could, soy yes. milk? Yeah, you could definitely. You're gonna have different results. You're gonna have different consistency, texture. So now I'm just cooking it out. I'm just cooking that starch out. Okay, so I'm... Are you gonna show that? Yeah, I will. I'm just like, so I'm trying to get it. Quick. You want to just keep your 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 whisk, and you want to keep it moving. So that's why I'm not like stopping right now. So what I'm gonna do is pour this out onto the marble. So you can see it. You basically want it like, you know, um, spackling that you use on the wall. <laughs> I mean, okay, it really so attractive. there was, missed the part regarding the cornstarch. Did that go into the sugar? So the sugar went in first to the yolks, and then after the sugar into the yolks, um, we added the cornstarch. Okay. And that was me just dropping something on the That's floor. okay. So, I like to cool it immediately. I have this big slab of marble here. So, so if they don't have marble, what you would you pour cool on a tray? Put plastic on top of it. Make sure it doesn't. Do you have to skin. chill the tray? I would. So chill it, but not freeze yeah. it. Yeah, or you can just you know it just you just get the temperature out of it really fast. You know this is this is the thing I like about. One of the things that's really nice about marble. All right, we're going to let that cool. And now, I'm going to move this burner because we don't need it.
Let that cool for a little bit more. Just move it around. So now you have your strawberries. So you can prepare your strawberries. Basically, I'm going to move some of this stuff, okay? You can you can hold the strawberries or you can just take the tops off and then you're going to just slice it. This is where you can do whatever you like with it, create a maceration. So what I've done is um, I did compressed strawberries. So I actually took the strawberries, placed it in a bag, and then vacuum sealed it with sugar. And you can put herbs in it or do whatever you like. So if you don't have a vacuum sealer, can you just put it in a Ziploc bag? Yeah, you can, you and can just, just, you can let just it... put it in a bowl and compress it. I mean, not compress it, just put it in a bowl, add sugar to it, and you're done. This is just, this is just what I did because I had... Because you, know, you have the, the toys. <laughs> yeah, and it's just a different, what it does is it really drives a lot of the flavor uh, out of the fruit. So this is like, I did this last night, yesterday. It changes the color a little bit. I mean, if you want like this really fresh, beautiful strawberries, you might not want to do that. So if they're really super ripe, then it's not necessary? What's that? If it's super ripe, yeah. you're saying it's not you can necessary? Just, you can, some people just prefer not using any sugar at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can use a and little bit of brandy, you can use sugar, you can use uh, peel, you can use um, herbs, you can use tarragon, you can use rosemary, you can use fresh ginger grated on it. Uh, you know, it's really up to you. So this is just kind of, I'm giving you like a base, and then you can take that base and you can do whatever you like with it. Um, so the sugar is just to sweeten this up because it, w it was good strawberries, but not great strawberries, right? Well, so, I also just like it a little sweeter. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that sometimes, and there's just a t pinch, I put a pinch of salt in there. It just drives some of the flavor a little bit. Some people put like a uh, red pepper flake, like one red pepper flake, like or two red pepper flakes, and you mix it in and you get that, you don't get, it's not spicy, it's not hot, but you get this kind of like, you're like, Oh, there's like something in there, but I can't quite figure out what it is, but it's not, I'm not one that likes to have like super hot, spicy, uh, uh, sweet, savory food. You know, there's just, it's just not the way I, your it's palate not, it's is just not my palate. Yeah. It's not my thing. So I'm just okay, going to show you what these Full like disclosure right is he goes into coughing fits with pepper. <laughs> oh gosh. Look at that. Look at how they're rising. Look at the layers of that. So they're starting to color. They're beautiful. I'm going to put it back in the oven. So we prepared our strawberries. I've got our strawberries here. This is how it started. It looks like I have a lot of strawberries to eat after this uh, demo. Um, that's what I'm noticing. So is the mousseline fully it's chilled cool. or yeah. is it warm? No, it's, what temperature it's do you cool. have? I would, you know, 60s, uh, or if you're in a refrigerator, you have it overnight, you know, it's going to be in the like, high 30s, 40, 40 degrees. So, here I have so if you do cool. refrigerate it, should you um, put the shrink wrap on directly onto the pastry cream so it doesn't form a skin? Yes. You can do that, or you can take butter. Well, it's hot and rub, rub, rub the butter on top. And that because, adds, because there's not enough fat in this? Of course. There's never, it's always the issue here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking for kind of a vessel to emulsify this. So I think I'm going to take this. Oh, so, okay. So if you do refrigerate it, and you pull it out the next day. Yes. Does it have to be remixed? I think that's what it says. It said, should, should you miss it? I think it, it mix it, right? The, you're talking about the pastry cream and the butter? No, no, no. Well, never mind the butter, but if you refrigerate it and you pull it out. No, like this. Don't, don't mix it. Just leave it as is. The pastry cream is, is here. And then what I'm doing is, is I'm softening butter up here. No, Michael, 
If you refrigerate it overnight and then you pull it out, does the pastry cream need to be no. remixed? No. And this is an example of it being in the refrigerator overnight. I made this yesterday. Or just pretend I made this yesterday because I have one in the refrigerator. And so what I'm doing is, is that what I didn't really add into your, I don't think I added into your recipe, is that I take an amount of butter, unsalted butter, and I create like a little, uh, I call it like a pomade. Just like a light paste, it's almost okay, like wait. a lotion. So can't, I heat can it you slightly. tip it forward more because can't see. So I heat it slightly, but I'm not melting it to the point where I'm separating. No, you're going to have to tip it even more. Can't see. I'll just pour it on the table. There. Do you need to? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're basically just melting it. Well, I'm melting it, but I'm um, see how I'm not, there's still, there's still pieces of butter in there. Uh -huh. You're not melting it. So you separate the whey and the uh, fat. You know, because once you do that and you mix it in, you're not going to get this r right type of emulsion. It's a lot, it's very common, like when you're making ganache for chocolates, mm -hmm. you have to have the butter in a very specific temperature when you add it to, when you're adding fat to fat, you have to be careful because um, there, you have to make sure that you're able to emulsify. It's very much like when you're making mayonnaise, mm -hmm. when you're adding uh, oil to egg yolks, you know, um, you have to be, you have to add it very slowly and eventually you introduce an acid to it to help with the emulsion. Mm -hmm. So here, I'm just making, so this isn't in the recipe, um, but this is something that's just really simple to do where you're gonna take like, say like two, two tablespoons of butter and you're gonna just create this emulsion. If you have a really hot room or you know it's warm out, you can just kind of have two or three tablespoons of butter sitting out and it'll probably be the right consistency to add to this pastry cream. And the purpose of, of you adding this is to do what? Well, this is where you're creating the, you know, the emulsion for the pastry cream. So where you're going to make it like a lighter, kind of more aerated consistency. So if you want to pipe it, it makes it more pipeable? It makes it more pipeable. And also, like, this is very fractured. Mm -hmm. So It looks almost like scrambled eggs. Yeah. It's pretty much what it is. You can do this with a, um, with this, you can do it with this. You could probably do it by hand with a whisk as well. So it's not like you always need these tools. That so I is it absolutely necessary that we add the butter? No. You, you can do it without, yeah, right? You can. see here you see how it's you know more custard like that's what I'm looking for now you have um, your cream so you're gonna whip some cream I'm gonna Oops. Step away you know what one. I Sorry. Hmm? So here, um, since we have a, a lot of purists in the house, I'm not going to use this. <laughs> well, the whole point is... Right. <laughs> Whoa. And then you can add some confectioner sugar, or you can not sweeten it at all. Just, it's up to you. 
this is where all the options come in. I wouldn't put any uh, acid in this or zest in this, at least at this point. Um, you can add vanilla beans if you like. So this is where, you know, and you can get like uh, different types of whipping cream where there's manufacturing whipping cream, which is the, it's the, it, they actually whip and hold their shape better. Um, the fat's different. Um, this is a Strauss, which is, you know, a local heavy cream. Um, it's pretty amazing. They also make an ice cream base, which is incredible. Um, it's like 16% fat. This is 30, I believe this is 38% fat, mm -hmm. which is pretty high. So you can pre-whip the cream because this is, this could be like watching paint dry, watching, you know, watching me whip cream. Um, do you also have a favorite vanilla extract? Ready. There's a question. Did you hear that? Vanilla extract. I mean, uh, you know, Nielsen Massey's really nice. Uh, Matty Geese is really nice, which is a Madagascar vanilla, uh, vanilla extract. Nielsen Massey also makes a vanilla extract. Um, I mean, vanilla is just really expensive. It's like precious cargo. But, um, but Nielsen Massey is also more accessible, I think, right? It is. You can get Nielsen Massey through like, you know, any chain store, um, you know, like say for example, like a- uh, like, I keep doing like that. Whole Foods. Maybe it's not me. For some reason, the f it keeps flipping. Oh, it flips to you? Yeah. That's scary. Now, is everybody getting to see Jackie for a minute? Is no, just my happening? forehead. Oh, so look, there we go, it's whipped. I like it really soft. Okay, so now we have our little plate. A little hero plate. How's the one in the oven doing? It's beautiful. But here's, uh, here's something I prepared earlier. These guys, I think, are ready. Hey, look at that. Mm. Oh my God. That really <laughs> you enjoyed that? Mm -hmm. So typically what you would want to do is, I know that you just took these out that you tasted, but you want the shortcake to be cooled down, right? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you add butter, if you, if you, it'll, the cream and butter into the pastry cream is really going to react to it. I mean, so you can take a piping bag, but here I'm just trying to eliminate having to, you know, use a lot of equipment. Mm -hmm. um, so here just, I'm just using a spoon. Right. So, so I might, noticed that even um, with the butter in it, it still holds up its thick consistency, right? Yeah. And here, you can, you, can, you can arrange these so they're like perfect on here, but I'm kind of like... Messy? You know, ha no, I'm not messy, but I just like it to be, you know, like that. That's me. So, you know, it depends on what you're doing and how many strawberries you want to use. I think this is just kind of a sloppy dish for me. And then you could take There you go. Strawberry shortcake. Simple. <laughs>